Facebook Live, shall we, as we've got our Penns Manor students here to visit with us today, and, well, we've got some elementary students here, and uh, I, I never give the adults a chance to introduce themselves, so we'll let each of you do that as well, because sometimes I just neglect to do that. Let's start elementary school-wise, shall we? Hi, I'm Kristen Zeglin. I'm the elementary principal, and today I have five, or excuse me, three fifth grade students with me. Today. Uh huh. Three fifth grade students. You guys ready to go? Well, come on up to the microphone. And by the way, we are Facebook living this for folks who want to watch on Facebook. And I'll just be quiet and let you go right ahead. For several years, the fifth grade class has made no so fleece blankets to support the Pennsylvania Education for Children and Youth Homeless Project. For our te- first, our teacher read us the story, The Quilt Maker's Journey. This story is about a young princess who uses all her wealth. Then she comes to realize the best gifts we can give to one another are gifts from the heart. The quilt maker uses her sewing talent to make beautiful blankets. Then she goes into town each night and covers the homeless with one of her blankets. They wait to find themselves surrounded in warmth and love. There you go. Inspired by the story, our teachers then divided us into 12 teams. Each team was given yards of fleas bought by the teachers. We used teamwork to make the blankets. Every person on the team helped. First, we cut off the edge. Our teacher rolled it into a ball to reuse for other projects. Next, we cut a square from each corner. Our teachers also had us keep this part to two. The teachers really stressed reduce, reuse, and recycle with us. Little did we know that peace would become a cute snowman craft for a Christmas tree ornament. Next, we had to cut all the edges as a fringe and tie one piece from the top fleece and one piece from the bottom fleece to make the blanket. Each knot was tightened and doubled for a sturdy blanket. We then got our picture with the blankets and folded it neatly. Andrea Sheasley, the regional coordinator for Region 6, came to our school. After she talked to us about homelessness, we presented the blankets to her. She was excited to get them since she did not have any for the region to give to others. Region 6 covers 11 counties in Pennsylvania. We know our gift from the heart will warm many. Like the character in the quilt maker story, we added the special Penn's Manor touch to make sure the blankets were also beautiful so people could tell the blankets were made with caring hands. We did the project as a part of our school's Alveus program, which helps to create a bully-free school. By making these blankets, we showed our support and understanding towards others. Wonderful presentation. Now, we've not been introduced to each of you, so each of you come on up to the microphone again and tell us who you are. You're all in fifth grade, right? Yep. Okay. My name is Morgan Wayno. Okay, Morgan. My name is Silas Bothell. Uh Uh-huh. My name is Elizabeth Thiel. Well, you all did a wonderful job, and uh, congratulations on the project, too. That sounds wonderful. Now, what was the special Penn's Manor touch? Just wondering. (laughs) The special Penn's Manor touch. I got to hear this. Um, to um, use teamwork. There you go. Teamwork. That's all you really need to do. <laughs> well, congratulations and thanks so much for sharing that story with us. We appreciate that very, very much. And now let's turn our attention to some older students. Uh, I'm not going to say an older principal, <laughs> that, Michelle. That's probably smart. <laughs> okay. But uh, do introduce yourself if you would. My name is Michelle Dolgis, and I'm the high school principal at Penn's Manor High School. Um, and this is a hard act to follow this fifth grade, Telling but you. we're going to try. I brought uh, three uh, senior or three high school students mm-hmm. with me this morning. I have two girls from our girls basketball team and one from our boys basketball team. Mm-hmm. I have Maddie Weaver, who's a team captain, and I have uh, Autumn Fennell, who is uh, 12 points. 12 points away from her 1,000 points, so hopefully hopefully tonight they play and she can hit her 1,000-point mark. And then I have Adam Dumb, who's the captain of the boys' basketball team. All right, well, let's meet them all. Come forward, if you will. Boy, they're being shy now. They sit there and they're they, not watch, always shy. they watch these elementary kids and they know what a tough I'm act it is shy. to follow. Let's, um, Matt, who said they're not shy? You, Maddie? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pull that microphone down just a little bit. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little high. There you go. All right. You're in, you're in the back court. Dumb's in the front court. He's <laughs> All right, Maddie and uh, Autumn, uh, take it away. We've got your game on the air tonight here on 1160. You oh, know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're really excited for it. Uh, it's a big game for us, so hope it all goes well. Taking we've been, on. <laughs> we've been uh, preparing for it. So. Taking on Homer Center Wildcats tonight. Yeah. It's yeah. a big one. So, <laughs> so, so Coach Maloser, you know, a few years ago when there were some coaching openings happening all across the Heritage Conference, 
I asked uh, Coach Malozer, I said, are you interested in any of those? Because one of them was the boys' job at, at his alma mater. And he said, no, nah, if you saw the team that I have that's in seventh grade right now, he says, you wouldn't want to leave. Because, <laughs> and, and you guys, are, you were the ones, uh, the seventh and eighth graders from, from that era, and, and now here you are. So uh, he is, uh, he's very pleased to be coaching you. So tell me about Autumn, tell me about him as a coach. Uh, I don't know if you want me to. <laughs> I don't know if he wants you to. Um, no, he's a great coach. He's always willing to work and put in extra work with us, and it, it's good. He he makes it fun. Yeah. All right, so what has he told you about playing Homer Center tonight? You don't have to give away secrets because there will be Homer Center people listening, you know. Um, we uh, have gone over, like, all the strengths and weaknesses and what we need to do to win, and uh, we've got little packets we go over, like, very in detail, so mm -hmm. we know pretty much what we need to do. Now, both of you young ladies uh, like to shoot the three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Miss, Miss Fennel likes to drag drag herself there into the middle where all the tall people are and, and do things in there as well. Um, I said to Jack, I said, uh, here come these Penn's Manor girls. They're fearless when it comes to getting into the lane. Um, is, is that something that's specifically coach or is just a part of who you are? It's just how our team is. We, we like to drive and obviously shoot the three, but just part of our game. Yeah, Penn's Manor basketball, uh, particularly girls basketball, has a rich history, uh, and uh, and you're living up to it. Uh, when you hear all this uh, hype about your team coming into a season, as you did this year, people were talking about Penn's Manor right off the bat. Um, change the way you played, change the way you looked at things, or are you just doing business as, as usual? Just taking each game at a time. Uh -huh. uh, worrying about each game, not the big picture, totally, but... Looking forward to the big picture, but you got to take it one step at a time. There you go. That's a big step tonight against the Homer Center Wildcats. It'll be fun to watch. Fun to watch, and we'll have it on the radio. Ladies, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's meet Adam Dumb then. He comes over. And uh, and what did you score in that game there a, a week or so ago? 49, 69, <laughs> 89 points in the game? <laughs> 35 against United. 35? Yeah. Did you have a feeling in, in the pregame that this was your night? or, or? No, I would just – there was that portage tournament at the holiday tournament at Portage. And the first half, it was just really quiet just for both teams. I mean, United is really good, really young. And then the second half, I started playing the post more often. And I like my chances back there or down there mm -hmm. rather than shooting outside. So. Now, you're not, uh, you're big, but you're certainly, <laughs> you're certainly not big man big. You're, uh, you know, playing, playing the pivot. Um, but, but you get in there and, uh, I, I assume that it's your quickness in there against some of the bigger guys that uh, is able to offset their size advantage. Well, I always, I'm guilty. I always hang around the three-point line. I want to shoot like everyone else. And I'm not going to lie, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I just kept sneaking behind. And United had some big, that uh, Fabrizio, he's a big boy. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to sneak behind and around all those kids. And I just, all those loose rebounds I was getting and it was just a good night for all of us. Tommy and Buzzo, they all played good. Horwat had a really a good night, too. So it was an all-around team effort. Yeah, it's kind of interesting watching your team this year because you've got that little blend of uh, young guys and uh, with, with not a lot of experience. And then the guys like you and, and, and Zach, mm. well, I guess the two Zachs uh, <laughs> and Tommy, you've, you've got a lot of experience and uh, you've sort of learned the ways in the Heritage Conference. Not an easy conference to play, is it? No, it's very tough this year. Yeah. I know our north section alone, I mean, Purchase line, I don't know if they lost any starters. And West Shemokin, was they're just big and tall. Lost a four and two by both of them. So North's going to be very interesting this year. And then Lincoln Nears to Powerhouse. Yeah. And then we still have some other South games to play. So it'll be a fun season. Yeah. Um, cool to you, see it all wind down. You take a look at some of these uh, ball clubs because you get to play. Uh, you did play Homer Center earlier this season. I think we had that game. Uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, you'll have another shot at both West Shemokin and Purchase line. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to get a rematch with them. We got purchase line at home, so I think that should be a better turnout. And uh, I would just be prepared better off for both teams. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's talk academics uh, as well, or, or career plans, college education types of plans uh, for all of you high school students. Adam, what's the plan? Well, after graduation, I intend on going to a trade school out in Philadelphia called Williamson School of Trades for Power Plant Technology. For, for what technology? Power Plant Technology. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, to lead to what particular career field? I want to be a chemist in the, uh, not Hummer City power plant, but just a power plant in general. Okay. So. All right. Well, that's, Maddie, take it away. That is a good plan. Oh, Maddie, he, he knows what your plans are. Steve. Yeah, I guess we talked about it on the way here. So 
Um, I plan to attend college. I don't know where yet. I've been looking at a few schools, but uh, I want to major in elementary education with uh, special education. Mm -hmm. Do you have a special heart for, for kids? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so you saw these three here, and you said, no, maybe I want to change my plans now. <laughs> no, they're cool kids. <laughs> I was talking to them on the way here. Yeah. So you haven't chosen a school yet? Not yet, no. no narrowing it down? Yeah, I was, uh, I've been looking at IUP, obviously, and um, UPJ and Slippery Rock. So mm -hmm. it's a hard decision. They're all really nice schools. Yeah, yeah, they really are. All right, Autumn, come on up to the microphone. You've got a little more time, don't you? Um, I definitely want to attend college. Where, what for, isn't decided yet, so. Oh, yeah, you're keeping your, your options yeah. open. Yeah. yeah, no particular interest in, in, a, in a career path at all just yet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then there you go. That was easy for her. She, <laughs> she, she copped out for me there, Michelle. All right. Well, thank you all for coming in, talking a little athletics and academics. Uh, Mrs. Dolges, what's going on at the high school that folks need to know about? Anything of interest uh, for the general public? Uh, right now, we're just in the middle of the Keystone exams. Uh, we're doing biology today or yesterday and today. <clears throat> we have algebra tomorrow and Friday, and then we have literature Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. So mm -hmm. we're doing uh, Keystone exam retakes. Um, we did just have two students receive their Keystone degrees uh, through our FFA program at the Farm Show. Um, Carrie Bouch, who's actually a Purchase Line student that comes to our Ag program, received her Keystone degree. And Ashlyn McCullough, uh, who's a Penn Spanner student, she also received her Keystone degree. And we have 20 students heading to the FBLA state competition. Wow. So we have, um, you know, a lot of really good kids, and they, they perform very well, both, you know, athletics and academics, and we're really proud of all of them. Terrific. Terrific stuff. Well, that's great. Um, and Mrs. Eglin, what's happened in the elementary school? Um, just every day, you know, trying to see if we can get uh, one week of five regular days in without <laughs> a two-hour delay or a day off. But um, we're just, you know, going day by day and um, having a really good year, a really right. good group. Well, that's terrific. Terrific. Well, kids, thanks for all coming in today. You elementary kids, go back and have fun. You high school kids, go take a test, okay? <laughs> and there you go. Thank it, you. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented as always by First Commonwealth Bank here on WCCA.